So again, I want to say welcome. Glad to see some familiar faces that I haven't seen in a while. And a familiar face that uh, is normally here is not here, and that's our sister Pat. And sister Pat, yeah, I saw that when I went back there, that she is online, but she's, thank God for technology, because she is in the island. <laughs> uh, I, I, it's natural that I forgot the next island next to it. That's where she is at. Uh, yeah, Grenada. Uh, so she is there. She's going to be there for a while. But again, thank God to technology, she is able to join in. And also to Pastor Bill Mom, who has been faithfully joining us every uh, Sunday on Zoom. So again, thank you so much for being here today. Now I want to start off by asking this or making this statement and see if you agree with me. For most, if not all people, their desire is to live in a peaceful world. Is, would that be a fair statement? People desire to live in a peaceful world. But the sad reality is we live in a world that appears or it is going or gone haywire, spiraling irrationally and unpredictable out of control. From school violence, to corporate greed, to racial tension, to a divided government, increasing crime rate, lack of morality, political tyranny, as we are witnessing or experiencing going on in Ukraine, political correct correct religion, and what I mean by that is those who do not adhere to the truth of God's word, but do things that is politically correct. Are you with me? And the list goes on and on and on. So it begs the question, what is wrong with the world? What is wrong with the world that we live in? To be frank, there is no shortage of answer to this question because everyone and every group has their own thoughts or idea as to what is wrong with the world, both locally and internationally. So the world at large, everyone has their some ideas of what is wrong with the world. So for example, I want you or for us to listen to this short audio clip, it's about a minute and 23 <laughs> seconds in length, uh, that I recently listened to uh, on NPR radio. It's from uh, what you call the mayor, newly elected mayor of Cincinnati. And he was asked the question, what's going on in this city? And I want you to listen to his response of what he thinks is the root cause of what's wrong in the world, precisely what's wrong in Cincinnati from this interview. So take a listen. Crime, Crime is, is up in Cincinnati. Cincinnati. There's, There's a mass, mass shooting, shooting at a riverfront, riverfront park, park last, last summer. summer. There, are there are no easy fixes here. here. But, but you, you have said, said one of the root causes, causes is, is poverty. poverty. Explain, Explain a little, little bit more, more and then we can bring it back. Well, well, certainly, certainly uh, law enforcement has a role to play here to prevent violent crime and violent criminals. Our police chief, the law enforcement, he was the first to tell you that law enforcement alone is not the solution. You cannot jail our way out of the problem. It caused so much violence on the property. And during the pandemic, that has only been exacerbated. Our black and brown communities have disproportionately felt the effects of this pandemic. Uh, and so as we look to interrupt the violence, um, certainly a part of that is law enforcement, but most of it is social determinants. Why are folks in such a dire consequence that they're, they're reaching for a gun or they're turning to violence? What, what, what dire uh, choices do they have to, to make them uh, make those decisions? And so as we lead this government, I'm only four weeks in, uh, the priority for us is really economic recovery with racial equity in the center of the frame. We, we need to make sure that people have access to good paying jobs with good benefits, a pipeline of wealth, particularly for our black and brown communities. 
you know, we, we have to create opportunities in all of our 52 neighborhoods if we're going to succeed. Uh, what's wrong with the world and in our city is always attached to some social condition. Is that correct? As opposed to the real cause of what's going on in the world. See, what happens in the world that we live in is like trying, it's like driving your car and you see the check engine light comes on on your dashboard. And it's telling you that there is something wrong. Is that wrong or right? But instead of looking at the root cause of the issue, uh, we put a tape <laughs> over the check engine light and wishing or think that it solved the issue, only to find out it has it gotten worse and worse and worse because we fail to address the root cause of the issue. It's getting sick. Your body gives you pain to let you know that there's something going on. But rather than going to the doctor, we try to self-medicate ourselves. Is that right? In trying to take different painkillers to mask the pain as opposed to finding out the root cause of the pain. Does that make sense? So what is going on in our world? What is going on in our world? What is really going on? I've got to say that because we, we, we're living in what is called chaotic time. So what's really wrong with the world? The Apostle Paul gives us the root cause as to what is wrong with the world. He give, gives us the root cause as to really what's going wrong in the world. So I want you to grab your Bible, open it, or you could follow along on the screen, screen and we're going to take a look at Romans 1, chapter 1, verses 18 through 32. So that's Romans chapter 1, verses 18 through 22. And in this passage, Paul is going to make it clear. So are you there? So let's read. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men, who by their unrighteousness suppress the truth. For what can be known about God is plain to them, because God is showing it to them. For his invisible attributes, namely his eternal power and divine nature, have been made, have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world. In the things that have been made, so they are without excuse. Verse 21. For although they knew God, they did not honor him as God, or give thanks to him. But they became futile in their thinking, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Claiming to be wise, they became fools, and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images resembling mortal man, and birds, and animals, and creeping things. Therefore, God gave them up in the lust of their hearts to impurity, to the dishonoring of their bodies among themselves, because they exchanged the truth about God for a lie, and worship and serve the creature rather than the creator, who is blessed forever. Amen? For this reason, God gave them up to dishonorable passions, for their women exchanged natural relations for those who are contrary, for those that are contrary to nature. And men likewise gave up natural relation with women and were consumed with passion for one another, 
men committing shameless act with men and receiving in themselves the due penalty for their error. And since they did not see fit to acknowledge God, God gave them up to a debased mind to do what ought not to be done. They were filled with all manner of unrighteousness, evil, covetousness, malice. They're full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, maliciousness. They are gossip, slanderers, haters of God, insolent, haughty, boastful, inventors of evil, disobedient to parents, foolish, faithless, artless, rootless. Though they know God's righteousness, God righteous decree that those who practice such things deserve to die. They do not only do them, but give approval to those who practice them. Father God, we thank you, Lord God, for the reading of your word. Lord God, we know the truth of the gospel has been revealed. And sometime, oh God, the truth of the gospel can be offensive. But God, your word is truth. And so God, I stand here today to declare the truth of your word as to what is wrong with the world from your perspective. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. As I said, in political correct church, they will not, they would sidestep around the issue. But God doesn't sidestep around the issue. What's wrong with the world can be clearly seen. Four things that Paul pointed to that can be seen from the passage we just read that is wrong with the world. The first thing that Paul talked about or mentioned or pointed us to of what is wrong with the world. So uh, let, let's, let's digress a little bit. Paul was writing the letter to the Roman Christian in Rome, but it was directed at the Roman Empire. And so he's letting them know what is wrong. And the first thing that Paul pointed to was suppressing the truth concerning God, concerning the, the creator of all of living things. So they suppress the truth. What does it mean to suppress the truth? Suppress the truth, again, the example would be like putting, again, a black tape over the check engine light and trying to liberate it. I don't want to see it. So people suppresses the truth of God's word. And when people suppress the truth of God's word, society bear the consequences. Paul tells us that even though they knew God, they acknowledge him not. The God has revealed himself in the creating things of the world. Things did not happen by itself. Does that make sense? When we look up and look at the sky or even look at our lives, we know that we did not happen by chance. We know that somebody with a mind, with a forethought, had to put everything together. Things does not happen by itself. For everything that, what are they say in science? Uh, what's, what's the word I'm looking for? For every cause, there is an effect. Does, is, does that make sense? So, who is the effect of the cause? God. We cannot explain life without bypassing him. And whenever we try to do that, we have what we have in our culture. So the first thing that culture does is try to suppress the truth of God's word. We see that around the world. Why do you think that's happening in Ukraine? Suppression. Trying to liberate what is true. The second thing that Paul pointed to is people exchange the truth concerning God for a lie. We try to create God to our image. 
rather than knowing that he created us in his image. So we try to do things that is outside of God's will. Does that make sense? So they exchange the truth of God's word for a lie. And this is nothing new. When we look back from the beginning of time, when God created the first set of human beings, he put them in a perfect environment, in a perfect place, no sickness, no disease, no issues at all in life. Are you with me? But what happened? They exchange the truth of God's word for the lie of the enemy. And we are paying the repercussion to this day. We don't like to talk about sin in today's culture. But sin is the effect of everything that we have seen going on. And we try to fix it by throwing things of it. And I ask, how well is it going? How well is it going? Is the world any better off? I don't think so. Because the issue of the root cause of what's wrong with the world is not being addressed. And if it's being addressed, I should say, when it is addressed, it is suppressed. We have the uh, believers living around the world that's being prosecuted by their faith. Why? Suppression. And it kind of blew, blows my mind because if some people think that God's word is not true, if he is not real, then why the suppression? Why kill people? Why put people in prison for something that is not real? The truth is, God is real. God is real. But people rather, some rather exchange the truth concerning God for a lie. The third thing that Paul pointed to, while they know the truth, suppress the truth, Exchange of truth for a lie is, again, refusal to acknowledge God for who he is. Refusal to acknowledge God for who he is. The fourth thing that Paul points to, and we've seen this in our culture, we've seen this around the world, is giving approval to what is contrary to God's moral and ethical principle. Is, 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 that, is that right? Given approval. Those who know better should do better. Is given approval to what is contrary to God's moral and ethical purposes. The hot button in our society is homosexuality or same-sex marriage. They try to suppress that. But what happens at the end? People make a fool of themselves. Now, this will not go over well. But it's the truth of God's word. And this is the end result. When people suppress God's, the truth of God's word, when they exchange the truth of God's word for a lie, when they refuse to acknowledge God and give approval to do things that is contrary to God, well, here is the outcome. And see again if you agree with me or with the Bible, not with me, but with the scripture. The outcome, Paul's right, through the power and the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, is envy, maliciousness, haughty, Foolish murder. Do you remember when the first murder took place in history? First murder took place in history. Cain and Abel. Why did Cain slew Abel? If you remember the story, 
that were supposed to bring an offering. Over a period of time, Cain brought his offering, but God did not accept it. He got mad. And God spoke to him and said, Cain, why are you downcast? If you do right, will you not be accepted? And what else God told him? He says, sin is crouching at your door. But you must overcome it. What did Cain do? Well, the next time we read, Cain and his brother was out in the field someplace and he took a, he, he, he slew him. First murder. Why? Because of sin. And we're seeing that repercussion today. People kill people because of their depravity of a sinful mind. Isaiah said, I believe, who knows the heart or the heart above all things is deceitfully wicked. Who can know the heart? The heart of humanity outside of God is deceitfully wicked. We see it in our society today. What would make someone go into a classroom and shoot up innocent children? You put your children on the school bus or you drive them to school expecting them to come back home only to get a call. In the school. Why? It's not poverty. It's not lack of money. But it's sin. Because you see this in every aspect or every segment of culture. Not just in a, a, a part of society where there's high poverty rate. It's happening where it's very affluent. So is the cause a lack of money? No. It is of the human mind. So we have murder. They say uh, when, when, when we live in a depraved world, we have slanderers, boastful, faithless, heartless, haters of God, inventors of evil, insolent, disobedient to parents, and rootless. This is the outcome when the truth of God's word is suppressed in the world, in our country in our community. This is the end result. Yet, there is hope. Yet, there is hope. For the world that is going spiral, it can be reversed. How can it be reversed? Well, just by doing the opposite of what Paul pointed to. Does that make sense? It can change. And so here are the four principles that can change the world that we live in. The first one is live our lives in accordance to the truth of God's word. Live our life in accordance with the truth of God, the creator again of the world and all there is in it. Live our life to that truth. The second principle is live accordance with the truth of God's word. For his word stands forever. His word will not fail. His word stands forever. To go against God, as he had told Paul at one time when Paul was going against him, he said, why do you kick against the goat? And if you understand what a goat is, in agricultural term, it is a a wheel with spikes on it that the hawks will pull to plow the ground. But the, as the ox goes back, it will hinder itself because of the spike. The ox was meant to go forward. And what Jesus was saying to Paul when he showed up and encountered him, why do you kick, why are, why are you inflicting yourself? Because that's all you're doing, Paul. So his word will stand forever. 
The third thing that we can do to change the reversal of the world that we are living in is to acknowledge God in Christ as Lord and Savior of our lives. Because he is the only true hope for humanity to live in peace and with each other. He is our only hope. You look at how many, again, peace accord has been signed by nations. And how many peace accord is still intact today? When we have peace with God, we cannot live in peace with each other when we understand who God really is. Does that make sense? Some might argue that wars is taught over religion. And the Bible would argue that war starts over religion because they don't know who God is. If we know who God is, there will be no division. We will be in unity. Why? Because Christ is the anchor and the center of our lives. Does that make sense? But when we misunderstand who he is, then we tend to have division. Am I making sense today? And look at us in here. We're all from different places, different background, but what keep us together? The cross of Jesus Christ. So when we understand, rightly understand who God is, there will be peace amongst humanity and peace in our government, peace in our world. But it cannot happen until we acknowledge that God is Lord and Savior. In other words, he's sovereign. Over everything, he is sovereign. The fourth thing that we can do is do not approve what God has disapproved. We see this in our school system. Teaching kids something that is contrary to God's will. Those who know better is approving what God did not approve. And as it continues, as should it continues, the world will be really get worse instead of better. But it can change by approving what God has approved or teaching what God has approved. Does that make sense? Peter declared this truth and in bringing this message to a close, saying this in 1 Peter 1, 20 through, 1 through 25. Having purified your souls, by your obedience to the truth for sincere brotherly love, love one another earnestly from a pure heart. Since you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, though the living and the, uh, through the living and abiding word of God, for all flesh is like grass and all its glory like the flower of grass. The grass wither and the flower fails, but the word of the Lord remains forever. The word of God will stand forever. And this word is the good news that is preached to you. God's words abides forever. The heaven and the earth may pass away, but God's word will remain forever. Lies will always change, but God's truth is always constant. It never changes. His truth never changes. His truth remains the same because if he did, if it didn't, he wouldn't be who he said he is. Does that make sense? So his word stands forever. Peter was just echoing what the prophet Isaiah had already mentioned in Isaiah 40, verse 9. 
That's what he's doing. He's looking back at scripture and speaking what God's already spoken. So when we abide in the truth of God's word, life can be really beautiful. This world will be a better place. When people repent of their sin, again, we don't preach that no more. We preach God loves you. But God say repent. Yes, he loves you, but he said repent. In other words, Turn from your ways to my ways. doesn't mean you have to list all your sins because God knows we are all sinners, Paul tells us. But when we acknowledge God for who he is and turn to him, he will heal us. He will heal this land. We can't say, in, as they say in this country so many times, God bless America, but living contrary to the will of God. God can't bless mess and he will not bless mess. Either we are with him or not. But we can't serve him, as I mentioned last week, when it comes to worship with lip service. We got with lip service from our mouth with no heart connection to him. And this is what we see in our government at times. We say, God bless America, but yet you go tell a mother you could go abort your children. Or that you got to teach your kid to be gender sensitive. No. It's contrary to God's will. But this is where the gospel gets offensive. And it is offensive. But yet, it's also the gospel that heals. Truths are hard to take. And I believe sometimes that's why people refuse the truth and accept the lie because it's easier to digest. Jesus says the road to heaven is narrow. Few find it. But the way to destruction is wide and broad, and many dear are falling it. Does a good God send people to hell? No, people send themselves to hell by suppressing the truth of God's word. Hear me clearly. Because we don't have a lot of time on this side of eternity, God is coming. Jesus Christ is coming back for his world. And he is coming back for those who adhere to his truth of his word. So when we look at his return, it will be a happy day for some and a sad day for others. The, the question is, which side of the fence you're going to stand on? I'm not a gambling man. Because there's a lot of other religion out there that one can go to and attend. But I stick with what I know is true in terms of the consequences. You see, any other religion out there, you could do whatever and there's no consequences. But with God, the living God, there are consequences to our choice. So if I fall in some other side of thinking, I don't have anything to worry about because I'm all well and good. But I don't want to wake up at the end of the day found out that I make the wrong choice. Does that make sense? So God's word is truth. The living God word is truth. And those, as we read in Psalms 145, call in him in truth. He will hear them. He will protect you, protect us. So there is nothing to lose with the God we serve. Yeah. Now, you might be asking today if the world is still going to go get worse and worse, how do we live our lives in it? Because we live in a world, we don't live in a bubble, do we? Mm -hmm. we, live, we, we, we live in a, a chaotic world. And Jesus is coming back but we don't know when. 
So in the meantime, how do we live our lives in a world that is spiraling out of control? You might be asking that question or thinking about that. That's good. But now I still have to live in this crazy world. How do I live in a world that's going haywire? Come back next week. Yeah. Invite a friend and we'll tackle that answer. Amen? Amen. All right. So I uh, thank you for uh, uh, listening in. I hope your heart was encouraged, blessed, and seeing things from God perspective of what's really wrong with this world it's not people it is sin of the people so father god we thank you lord god for revealing the truth of your word revealing the truth of your gospel the good news of salvation lord god we thank you for your grace and your mercy and your love for waters, that again, O oh Lord God, while we were yet sinners, Lord God, you die for our sin. So God, we give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' almighty name, we pray. Amen. Amen. And we continue in our worship with the sharing of communion. Could you get Pastor Bill? Thank <laughs> you.